In January of 2009, 17-year-old Luciano Arruga went missing from his neighbourhood outside Buenos Aires. He was never seen alive again. The case became emblematic of police violence in a country with a dark history of disappearances. Arruga's sister, Vanessa Orieta, took on the responsibility to lead the family's campaign for information about what happened to Luciano. In our country, it's been a long time that the families, especially those who live in humble villages, denounce different forms of delictive. When Luciano is offered to go out for the police, he is denied and what ends up happening is the same thing, that Luciano ends up losing his life, ends up being disappeared. Nosotros venimos denunciando hace mucho tiempo, desde que Luciano fue desaparecido, que Luciano desaparece por haberse negado a robar para la policía bonaerense. After many years and with no progress in the investigation into those responsible for his disappearance, the body of Aruga was found in 2014. Lamentablemente, en nuestro caso, nosotros no pudimos encontrar a Luciano con vida. Lo terminamos encontrando cinco años y ocho meses después, eh, enterrado como NN en el cementerio de La Chacarita. An anonymous tip guided the family to the cemetery in Buenos Aires. It was at this point when the family requested the involvement of the Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team to confirm the remains were those of Luciano Arruga. Un caso tan emblemático como nos pareció a nosotros, eh, el, caso, el caso de Garruga, porque es también un caso que demuestra las falencias que tenemos a nivel de Estado ¿no? para identificar cuerpos. The Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team role in the Arruga case was to identify the body, but it was also to provide the family with the assurance of independence, given the state's failure to provide Arruga's family with answers to their questions. The forensic anthropology team began its work identifying bodies in the 1980s. Mariana Segura is one of the investigators in the team. Y el origen que que tuvo fue que a partir de las dictaduras militares que no solamente sufrimos aquí en Argentina sino en toda Latinoamérica, había una fuerte necesidad de encontrar a nuestra gente desaparecida. This non-profit independent team was founded in 1984 when democracy was reinstalled in Argentina. For many years, the team had small offices in this downtown district of Buenos Aires. In the case of science, our contribution is in, in two very important issues. First of all, the identification process. But the other side is related to the justice, to provide scientific evidence to the court in all those cases where there is a prosecution about the perpetrator. So in both areas, our contribution is, is quite important. The team recently moved from their old cramped offices to its own new building in the former Navy Mechanics School, the ex-ESMA, where a detention center was run during the dictatorship, but now human rights organizations are based. From here, the forensic anthropology team runs a unique course for professionals from across Latin America. Y la escuela está orientada a tener grandes bloques, que es desarrollar la ciencia forense con la orientación de derechos humanos. Tenemos un bloque de cómo se debe hacer un correcto levantamiento en escena o de lo que implica una exhumación y después un trabajo de laboratorio, tenemos algunos temas importantes para tratar como femicidios en uno de los bloques, eh, autopsias y cómo hacer entrevistas a familiares, cómo notificar a familiares, cómo cruzar las líneas de evidencia, o sea, al final del curso eh, se trata de, de cómo se logra un proceso de identificación completo. This team has run courses in South Africa for over 10 years, but only recently began a course in Latin America. They say the most important aspect of their work is bringing together different disciplines. Lo más importante es interdisciplinariedad, porque es un término que se habla mucho, esto de que es importante tener equipos interdisciplinarios, pero después a la hora de la práctica suele pasar que no, eh, no, no se lleva a cabo, ¿no? O, o los idiomas que hablamos, un médico, un fiscal, un odontólogo, un antropólogo, un arqueólogo, pueden ser totalmente distintos y no ponernos de acuerdo. Eh, este, este curso no solamente es, es único por, por ser una, una, una escuela intensiva de ciencias forenses y derechos humanos, la, la única que hay en Latinoamérica eh, como escuela, sino que es interdisciplinaria. This course brings together professionals who travel from across Latin America and who share their experiences from their respective countries. Supreme Court magistrate in Guatemala 
Delia Davila says the resources available to impart justice are just one problem facing her country. El sistema de justicia no avance porque no tenemos los recursos suficientes, eh, la cantidad de jueces suficientes. Eh, la medida estándar internacional es de 17 jueces por cada 100.000 habitantes y Guatemala tiene 6 jueces por cada 100.000 habitantes. Learning new techniques and the use of new technology is vital in investigations given the limited resources facing institutions. From one of the most violent cities in the world, San Pedro Sula in Honduras, forensic doctor Vladimir Núñez Licona also travelled for this course late last year. Lo más llamativo para mí hasta el momento ha sido el uso de algunas tecnologías muy modernas, ¿verdad? En el abordaje o en la investigación de, de escenas de campos abiertos donde se sospecha que pudo haber eh, algún entierro, alguna fosa clandestina. Eh, eso que sucede a veces con cierta frecuencia en nuestros países, ¿verdad? en Centroamérica o en México, donde el crimen organizado o, o las maras, eh, pues igual, al, después de hacer sus crímenes, lo que hacen es eh, deshacerse de los cadáveres y los entierran. Entonces, todo ese tipo de cosas eh, de repente no están a, a, a nuestro alcance, ¿verdad? de hecho no lo están. Pero siempre es bueno saber que se puede contar con esas herramientas para la investigación de, de, de muchos casos. This team has provided investigators in historic trials over crimes against humanity, offering answers to victims of the dictatorship in Argentina. But since then, this team has been called on to work major cases in dozens of countries around the world. They've identified the remains of women murdered in Ciudad Juárez in Mexico. They took part in the search for the remains of the 43 students disappeared in Ayotzinapa, also in Mexico. They've worked in Europe, Asia and Africa, and most recently took part in the humanitarian process of identifying the remains of Argentine soldiers buried in unmarked graves in the Malvinas or Falkland Islands. The team works on sensitive cases, but it faces funding problems. Late in 2018, the Argentine government delayed sending funds and the team temporarily suspended its work. Con lo difícil que es la búsqueda de, de, de ayuda de recursos económicos para poder llevar adelante la labor, eh, creo que el desafío sigue siendo que eso ayuda también a mantenernos independientes okay, okay. Y, y a generar confianza con las familias, que es para quienes trabajamos. In the case of Luciano Arruga, it was the team's independence that the family needed, in the face of the state not offering answers as to what happened in 2009 to the teenager. Por supuesto que no encontrar a ese familiar querido es una tortura sistemática, eh, es un dolor inagotable, eh, es un trauma que perdura por siempre. El encontrarlo alivia en cierta forma eh, eh, ese dolor que provoca la incertidumbre de no saber dónde está el familiar, pero la tortura sistemática continúa, no se termina nunca porque en la medida que los familiares no podemos acceder a la verdad y a la justicia, condenando a los responsables al mismo tiempo, y me refiero a los responsables materiales, políticos y judiciales, eh, no hay posibilidad de terminar con esta historia. In 2015, the year after Arruga's body was found, Officer Torales from the Buenos Aires Province Police was sentenced to 10 years in jail. This was for the torture of Luciano Arruga in an investigation that dated to the year before Arruga was disappeared. For the family, this sentence came after six years of campaigning for justice. At last, here there was recognition of police involvement in the tragic story of the teenager. But for the disappearance of Luciana Ruga, there is still no information, nor have any officers been brought to account. Many years on, the family of Luciano Ruga continues to demand answers for his disappearance, and they continue to demand justice. The forensic anthropology team continues its investigations while also training investigative teams from around the continent. For thousands of families, the work of the forensic anthropology team has provided the evidence in court to reach sentences. For those who continue to fight for justice, the work of the forensic anthropology team at least provides them with the truth. <laughs>